Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be teaching you guys all how to pass your driver's test on the first try. Let's go! <laughs> So basically I did a how to pass your permit video first try 2018 about a year ago that video is like almost a year old and I got over a hundred comments telling me how the video really helped them and how they appreciated the video and how it helped them pass the permit test so then it's been a year and guess what I've got my driver's license bro I basically passed my driver's license um the end of may so it has been about like two months of having my driver's license and yes i passed on the first try and that's what i'm going to be teaching you guys today how to pass your driver's test on the first try hey guys so my video today is going to be structured into three chunks number one being the preparation and how you should prepare for the driver's test and number two being the documents needed you need to present at the dmv when taking your test and number three, last but not least, the actual test and my own point of view and perspective on how the test goes. So number one is preparation. I'm going to be laying out a whole roadmap from beginner to advanced on how to prepare for the driver's test. So I'm going to be dividing the preparation section into four parts. Number one, beginner. And number two, being intermediate level. And number three, being advanced level. And last but not least, level four, being you're ready to take the test and you don't need to hear about anything else. All right, so I'm gonna be putting the time descriptions for all of the four chunks. So if you're not a beginner and you're advanced, you could go skip to the advanced and hear me talk about how to prepare. But if you're just a beginner and you're watching this video, this is perfectly fine. You can still um, take valuable information from everything I'm gonna be telling you. So for beginners, I like to start off with, start by learning the basics. Basically, the basics to driving is how to brake, how to use the gas pedal, how to reverse, how to park, signal, and turn. That's basically all the basics you need to learn to drive. I first recommend you guys to all drive around your neighborhood and no more than 25 miles per hour because that is a speed limit for neighborhoods and residential areas. So remember that um, I prefer for beginners to drive around 10 to 15 miles per hour. But also uh, for beginners, I like you guys to get used to signaling, signaling even in the neighborhoods to create a good ha to create good habits. And then for beginners, I also recommend going to an empty parking lot, like an empty school, like when school is out on a Sunday or Saturday or summer break, go to the school and it's usually an empty parking lot and you have plenty space to practice. Practice driving around it, practice parking. I recommend at least a week in this stage, keep practicing what I told you guys for the beginner stage and you guys will be able to move on to the intermediate stage. So next on the list is the intermediate stage. So the intermediate stage, you guys know the basics. For intermediates, the area I prefer you guys to practice practice in are on residential streets that are not really busy maybe with like two or three cars at the max so basically streets outside of your neighborhood that are very discreet and quiet with little to no cars and um practice stopping at stop signs stop before the stop sign in this stage i like to um keep practicing stopping and braking slowly braking like smoothly so you don't when you brake, you go like this. Don't do that. When you brake, it should be like that. And for intermediate, there's another task you have to do is how to merge and change lanes properly. I'll leave a link on the description on how to properly change lanes if you guys don't know how to do that. And also for intermediates, learn to stay centered in your lane. Don't go like too left or too right. Make sure you guys are centered. And yeah, for intermediates, I prefer a minimum of two weeks in the stage to really get comfortable with the road. And thirdly, we have the advanced stage. That means you pass the beginner and intermediate stages. And now you're ready to finally properly drive on the road. Uh, meaning you can drive with your parents. So if your parents are going to a supermarket, they're going to Walmart, La Bonita, they're going to, you know, Sam's Club, Costco. So these are busier roads with stoplight, traffic lights, and cars, usually bumper to bumper, okay? You have to get comfortable with driving on the road with a lot of cars. So you have to be very attentive 
a very, very attentive. So be very careful. And on these busier roads, like the business districts and speed limit areas, it's basically 45 miles per hour, okay? So learn how to drive 45 miles per hour and keep with the flow of traffic, okay? You have to learn how to stay at a safe distance from another car behind you. So basically, the DMV handbook tells you to stay two to three seconds reaction time in between cars, but I like to give it three to five seconds reaction time. Basically half a car length um, behind another car. For advanced, practice stopping and braking smoothly behind cars. So when you're reaching a stoplight and there's a car in front of you, take your foot off the gas pedal and then slowly apply the brakes. Don't slam the brakes because you're going to damage your car and you don't want to tear off the brakes, okay? So make sure you smoothly brake because they test that on the DMV driver's test. And a common myth that people say on the that people say that you have to do on the driver's test is that you have to drive on the highway or the freeway. That's totally not true. You don't have to even go on the freeway. I didn't go on the freeway at all. I just drove on local roads, you know, going on busy roads, going to the mall, going to the supermarket, whatever. You don't have to drive on the freeway. If you're intimidated, don't worry about it. You know, you can still take the local roads and get to wherever you need to, okay? And last but not least, the fourth stage of preparation is now I'm ready to go stage. So basically, so now you feel like you're ready to go and go on and take the driver's test. And the first step to doing that is basically signing up and creating an appointment for your test. So go on a DMV website and your state's website and create an appointment for your driver license test. And I like to do it in advance, a month in advance when I take my test. So basically if I take my if I'm signing up for an appointment on April 30th, I like to make the appointment for May 30th. Give myself a month at least to basically revisit the skills, like basic skills intermediate skills and advanced skills that I've said and touched you guys. Um, I forgot to tell you guys, but the driver's test does practice parallel parking. And when I took the test, I, I mastered parallel parking in like four or five days. But the month in advance is what um, you should be doing. You should practice parallel parking in that month. In my state, you have to practice 18 inches away from the curb. So it has to be 18 inches or less away from the curb for you to pass. So practice parallel parking. A tip I have for practicing parallel parking is basically going to your DMV and there's a parallel parking section. So after DMV hours, they let you practice in the same uh, parallel parking testing area that they're going to test you on. Basically, in my DMV in Las Vegas, Flamingo, they have two double barrels, basically a car length in between. And you can just go in there and practice or you can just take two trash cans at home and make a car length and then put two trash cans and then just practice parallel parking in between the same thing. Or when you feel comfortable, like I did when I felt comfortable with parallel parking, I drove around my neighborhood or the residential area and found two cars parking next to each other, like a car length space, and I was a daredevil and I practiced. So it's up to you guys how to practice parallel parking, but definitely practice parallel parking. I'll link a video down below how to properly parallel park in a video that I watched. And also, in this one month span of preparing for the test, revisit the road, the road uh, laws and rules. So go around the drive around your city, maybe drive around the local roads and practice stopping, looking at traffic signs, everything. Okay. For the second chunk of my video is basically all the documents needed for taking the driver's test. So the documents needed first is what's called a beginner driving log. A beginning driving log is what you doc document yourself and you need 50 hours of driving experience. Um, use an app called the Road Ready app. I'll show you guys on my phone right now. Hold on. <clears throat> so this is the Road Ready app right here. If you guys can see it. If you guys can't see it. This is the Road Ready app and it's sponsored by State Farm. And every DMV I know of across the country in the US accepts this app. So basically it's a Road Ready app and you need um, 10 hours of night driving and 50 hours of driving in general. So basically 40 hours of day, daytime driving and 10 hours of nighttime driving um, equates to 50 hours. So basically every time you're driving in the car, all you need to do is press this start new drive. Start new drive and basically it just documents your drive and you can't cheat this app. Well, you could cheat this app, but when you press this, you can't cheat it because it counts your miles per hour. So um, your mileage and how how many miles you went. So like I'll stop right now and it showed that I went zero miles and 
uh, duration zero. All right, so you can use this while you're driving, or if you drove and you forgot to use this, you forgot to use this app, right? You can manually log your previous drive. So you go to here and you log your previous drive. So your start time, maybe I drove for 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and then I drove for two miles. And you can log it. And you can change it night or day, which is really useful. It. And it goes into your, your basically your data. And that adds on to how many hours you drove. And finally, when you're done with this, you can go view um, driving log and you can actually print it. See right here, I can print all of my stuff here that I drove. Another item you need, secondly, is your instruction permit. They will um, hole punch it and it won't be valid anymore after you pass the test. So bring your instruction permit. Number three, also proof of driver's education, basically driver's ed. Say if you did it, um, Online, I, per I did it online personally because I didn't go to a class and my school doesn't offer driver's ed So I went to online. I'll put the um, Driver's ed that I took online in the description and basically if you take it online like many other people You finish 30 hours of experience. It's basically 30 hours of driver driver's ed where you click and click and take some tests uh, but also you need your proof of vehicle registration, so get your vehicle registration ready. Also, your proof of insurance for the registered vehicle. And the vehicle doesn't have to be under your name or your parents' name. It just has to, the insurance has to line up with the vehicle registration, okay? So, I borrowed my uncle's car, and it's under his name. And it's both under his name, so the vehicle registration is his name and the insurance, so it lines up. And you could just borrow, I even asked the DMV people, you can even borrow your neighbor's car. As long as they give you the vehicle registration, it's under the same name. Last but not least, you need a certificate of attendance signed by your school. So you can go to your local school or I leave the form um, in my description for a certificate of attendance that your school needs to sign, alright? Now finally, what you guys all have been waiting for and why you clicked on this video is what is the actual driver's test like? Okay, so in my state to pass the DMV driver's test, you need at least an 80% accuracy. So basically a B or above. And basically you start off with 100 points. Your driver's, your driver instructor sits in the passenger seat and then she marks off if you get points off. So the maximum points you get off is 20 points in my state of Nevada. So you get 20 points off, you know, it's 80% and you pass. But if you get um, more than 20 points marked off, then you automatically fail, okay? So that's how my state is. If your state is different, search up your state. So the three most important components, in my opinion, for the actual driving test is speed limits, changing lanes and merging lanes, and turning. And last but not least is yielding and stopping. So for number one, what the whole test test is basically speed limits. It's very crucial. You will fail automatically if you're speeding or you're, if you're speeding or you're under the speed limit dramatically. So if you're speeding over the speed limit, you will fail automatically in my state, okay? So speed limit is very important. Constantly check your speedometer on your car because the driver instructor will be looking at your speedometer as well. So to reinforce school zone for Nevada, probably most other states, is 25 miles per hour unless flashing or school is in session and kids are present. If kids are present and school is in session and there's like a flashing yellow light or a sign says so, it is 15 miles per hour, okay? So if school's in session, 15 miles per hour, school is not in session and there's no flashing light, 25 miles per hour. Don't go any more than 25 miles per hour, okay? And if it's flashing, no more than 15 miles per hour. And for residential areas, that may, that basically refers to neighborhood areas. Inside neighborhoods and outside of neighborhood streets. 25 miles per hour as well. Unless there's a sign that posted maybe 35 miles per hour, just look for signs, okay? Make sure you look for signs. And if you don't know the speed limit for that area, make sure you ask your driver's instructor. Nine out of 10 times, they will give you the speed limit unless they're totally a jerk, a jerk, okay? And for speed reducing areas, basically major streets like with traffic lights, like next to supermarkets, gas stations, and all of that, that is 45 miles per hour usually on um, busy streets, like for Las Vegas, like Rainbow, 
where it's a busy street and there's a lot of cars and there's traffic signals and everything that's usually 45 miles per hour unless it's posted so check the signs on the side of the roads as well always check signs for speed limits okay secondly a big chunk of the test is changing and merging lanes this is a very uh tested thing so they will tell you to constantly change lane change lane to the left change lane to the right you know they will tell you to do that and your driver instructor will be uh, assessing your technique on how you change lanes so the proper way to change lanes is first signal right or left whichever way you're going look at your side mirror and then turn your head and look at your blind spot, which is your driver's window and where you can't see with the side mirror. And then you change lanes and accelerate accelerate through your lane change. It's like a three-step process. And I'll link um, a video down below on how to change lanes. But this is a very important and they will mark off points if you don't do this correctly. And they const my driver instructor constantly told me to change lanes, so it was a constant thing. And also under that category is turning. For turning, you should slow down before you make a turn, like a traffic light or a stop sign. So slow down and look left and right and then left. So you have to do this three-way process where you look left, right, and left, and then you turn, okay? And make sure when you turn, you don't collide with the other lane, like collide or run into the other opposing lane, which is causing traffic accidents. And that is an automatic fail because you put yourself in danger and the driver instructor in danger. So I'll put a picture right here. Basically, it's a red car. And you see how the red car is turning to the right? You have to go into that lane yourself and you can't um, cross the other lane where the green car is supposed to be turning in because you guys will collide. And also when you're turning, make sure you always signal always signal you'll get marked off points definitely for that and also watch out for bus lanes and bike lanes the rule for that is that you can't drive on those unless you're preparing to make a right turn where you can go into the bike lane for when you're 200 to 50 feet before your right turn okay so i got points marked off because i like when i merged to the right a little bit i touched the bike or bus lane a little bit and the driving instructor was ocd about that but I totally understand it's a hazard, so make sure you guys be careful bike lanes and bus lanes. Last but not least, focus on yielding and stopping. So when you stop at a traffic sign, always keep both hands on the wheel at all times, okay? Always keep both hands. Uh, never uh, drive with one hand because that's going to lose points. Always keep both hands. Even when you're on a traffic sign and you're stopped, stop before the limit line. Always stop before the limit line and never never stop like after the stop sign always stop before the stop sign okay always make a complete stop at a stop sign and then look left look right look left and then proceed with caution and for traffic lights make sure when you're stopping keep a safe distance from each other also when you're following cars when you're driving along roads and there's a car behind car in front of you keep a safe following distance because they'll be testing that if you're too close and you brake too hard that will cause points to lose on your um, actual test. So basically, after com completing your road assessment, you, your driver instructor will take you back to the DMV parking lot, and basically you conduct conduct the parking part of your DMV practice. I mean, DMV test. Sorry. <clears throat> instructor will tell you to parallel park in between two barrels with plenty of space, a car lane, and then the and the he or she will open the car door to look if you're in between the parameters, basically 18 inches for Nevada from the curb, and she'll be like, okay, good job or bad job, okay? So I got a good job and I passed the parallel parking. And also, after parallel parking, the DMV instructor will tell you to pull up and then park at whatever spot she chose. She chooses. So I have to park between two cars, so I was so scared, but I made it. I've had to park left, so you'll tell you she'll tell you to park in that spot or that spot. She'll tell you to park left or right. So just listen to her. And also a quick tip is that before you even take the test, um, I park where like there's no car, so I can reverse out easily, and I don't have to worry about any cars. So I park in like an isolated area, like all the way to the back of the DMV. But my drivers at Shrek they had to walk a long way. And that's basically all my tips for the actual test and. I know it's going to be stressful the day before, you're going to be stressing, and especially on the day of, just breathe, relax, you know what you're doing, and follow the road, road rules, and never overthink stuff, okay? Because you know it, 
and it's either you know it or not. Just apply everything you learned in the DMV handbook into action. You feel me? And a quick tip is drive to your driver's test. So what I'm saying is let your, don't let your parents drive you to um, the DMV on the day of your test. Drive yourself. You need to know how to drive. If you know how to, if you don't know how to drive to the DMV, how are you supposed to pass? You know what I mean? So drive to the DMV. Your palms will get sweaty. Just a warning. But like Eminem says, just kidding. <laughs> you will pass this test after you watch this whole video. And I promise you, you will pass. And just don't be stressed out. You know everything. And yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And comment down below if this video was helpful. And if you passed the driver's test, I'd love to hear. And I respond to every comment. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell notification. I'm out. Peace.